Good evening and welcome everyone, dear teacher, students and the speaker of the day, Mr. Avinash Rade. Dear students, I feel pri privileged to announce Learn From Home's webinar series for a high, high level. So one minute. Okay, ma'am, we can continue. I'll admit others. No, no, I'm getting an echo. Okay. Good evening and wel welcome everyone, dear teachers, students, and the speaker of the day, Mr. Avinash Rade. Dear students, I feel privileged to mm -hmm. announce Learn From Home webinar series for a higher level English medium schools organized by MNET with the technical support of INET Connect, featuring speakers like Dr. Manjushri Sardesh Pandey, the chairperson of the Board of the Studies, uh, Balbati Pune, Mr. Nadim Khan, academic coordinator of CHESS, Ra Aurangabad, and the Board of Studies member, Balbharti Pune, Mr. Avinash Rade, Board of Studies member, Balbharti Pune, Ms. Renita Agustin, state resource person of CHESS, Ra Aurangabad, Mrs. Vinita Nair, she is a resource person of English New Syllabus. She is also an author of several academic and non-academic books. Teacher Mrs. Sylvia, uh, Sylvia Francis, State Resource Person of Chess Ra Aurangabad, Learn From Home webinar series started from 4th of August 2020 and is going to continue till 21st of August daily except Wednesdays and Sundays at 6 p.m. This series would provide a wonderful platform to know and understand your English activity sheet. I request all our participants to be a part of the series that would guide you to deal your English activity sheet according to the state board norms and criteria. Now, it, now about the speaker, it's my privilege to introduce our speaker for this evening, Mr. Avinash Rade. Sir has been teaching English for Standard 9 to Standard 12 at Lal Bahadur Shastri High School, Manor. He is a member of the Board of Studies of Standard 11 and 12, Yuvak Bharati English course book for the state of Maharashtra and also the textbook writer for the same. His purpose of education has been to build leaders. Thus, he has been a resource person for teachers of Palghar Taluka at primary and secondary level for English course book for Standard 1 to 8. As a resource person of Maharashtra, he has conducted training programs for teachers of standard 9th and 10th on the revised syllabus. Presently, he is working as a state level resource person of standard 12th uh, 12 standard teachers for the introduction of the revised syllabus and evaluation pattern. He has been working as a resource person for the junior college English teachers in, at an in-service training program. At a very young age of 26, he has begun his journey teaching teachers almost twice his age and since then he has uh, no looking back constantly on his toes organizing various programs and workshops for the teachers. His endeavors to create dynamic teachers reflect in the fact that he has worked as a master trainer for the British Council for Primary Teachers and for Yashada and Apex Training Institute of Mahar <coughs> Maharashtra and RMSE. Having awakened a joy in learning amongst his own students, especially those from Adivasi background, he is also a guest lecturer for Standard 10 and Standard 12 students in many schools, colleges, and organizations. He has been working with the Wale Trust and each one, teach one organization since nine years for coaching English to Standard 9 and Standard 10. Presently, he is working as a president of Palghar English Teachers Association and a, tre a treasurer of Registrar Association for the English Teachers of Maharashtra, Emelka. 
by introducing spelby competition in remote areas of maharashtra he has made english language as child's play with innovative interactive session sa is also the recipient of the best teacher award from maharashtra shikshan sena konkan region sa avinash rade welcome you sir sir it's going to sa is going to deal with uh, expand the theme and sir i give the zoom platform to you to take over thank you ma'am thank you for the wonderful introduction i uh, can i share the screen yeah hmm? okay Oh. Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, ma'am, will you please help me when the chat is going on? Because I, as I'm in yes, the presentation, yes, I'll do that. I'll, I'll have that. to stop the presentation meanwhile. So, yeah. uh, children or students, let's go to the expansion of the theme, uh, which is our most important part in the activity sheet. Uh, let's find out uh, what is it. Uh, so what are the objectives of expansion of the theme why is this activity given in the activity sheet there are so many of the activities in the course book or textbook as well but uh, we must uh, know what are the objectives why does the government or the board want to have the expansion of theme for the uh, students at this age the first one is to develop students thinking ability and express as per their own vocabulary so here you may be able to understand that okay you need to think and uh, again it's not the same the board does not want each and every student to be in the same way because the first objective itself describes that okay they can use their own vocabulary that means you are there to interpret in your own way so there isn't any kind of restrictions you are free to do anything that you wish the second objective is to develop imagination you need to have the imagine you need to imagine you need to mind map Uh, we are going for all those things and you need to create a strong opinion on any given subject so these are some of the objectives uh, before going to the actual expansion of theme uh, the first thing that we need to understand is the theme what is the theme so theme is a central idea whatever the sentence is given to you whatever proverb is given to you, you need to find out the central idea of it if it is a statement that is a maxim you need to understand the maxim uh, it may be a fact it may be a lesson uh, or a thought uh, it can be an advice given to the uh, general public it may be preaching idiom or proverb phrase or quote or saying so these are the themes when you understand the theme only then you can go for the expansion so after understanding the theme we are moving towards the expansion so what do you need in expansion so you need to visualize uh, can uh, ma'am uh, can we have the uh, reaction of the students so what do they mean by visualization they have not written anything okay my first is what do you mean by visualize so students what do you mean you by visualization Let me see the YouTube. Yes, ma'am. Students, you all can write the chats. Chat. Uh, I'll finish the first part. They need to visualize, illustrate, and critical thinking. So these are the three things that needs to be done before you go for the expansion of the theme. So what are these? Because they are almost same: visualization, illustration, and critical thinking. What do they need? Is there any answer, ma'am? No, sir. okay uh, i'll just move forward uh, when you want to visualize that means we are going for the second objective that is imagination you need to imagine the topic is given to you the idea is given to you and you have to think about it so you have to uh, explore more and more you need to illustrate it illustration means you need to uh, explain it in various uh, manners the second is okay this is the general idea you have to talk thought about it and then you are going for the personal experience so if uh, the topic is given any kind of proverb is given any uh, saying is given any maxim is given so you can relate yourself with that 
and your personal experiences are expected you can associate the various kinds of uh, 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 stories or anecdotes uh, to the given theme or uh, you can give the parallel ex examples uh, while dealing with the expansion you can share the similar ideas and all these you you see that the first category is almost the same visualization illustration and critical thinking which demands imagination which demands exploration which uh, asks you which uh, wants to explore more and more out of your that means uh, uh, you need to brainstorm the first three uh, relate with the brainstorming and the second that is blue in blue they relate with a person personal it uh, goes with our knowledge with our experiences and let's move to the next one so this will help you for the draft so you need to think about the selection of word you need to find out what expressions are you using uh, while dealing with this uh, uh, expansion of theme and after having this uh, material so this is your preparation right now you haven't started writing anything yet so all these process is is going in your mind and then after that uh, you have to decide what kind of narration are you going for uh, you need to think about the structure in which you are going to present your uh, uh, write up and you need to think about the format so this is what is expansion so ma'am uh, i'll stop sharing here and i want to have some of the discussion with the children can can i stop sharing right now or shall i continue sir you can stop i have got visualize means to see yes and uh, from the youtube mm -hmm. they are saying a visualize means to form a mental image very image. nice thank you very much and he is he or she is absolutely right to create a mental picture so you you need to prepare a image image uh, in front of your mind in your mind okay this is the uh, proverb or this is the saying that is given to me so what may happen and uh, is there anything else ma'am do we have something more what is parallel example what is parallel example that means once you understand the theme we are going to understand it afterwards uh, parallel examples means the example that is given in the proverb or that is given in the maxim and you have to find out such similar examples in the society maybe the day to day life maybe from a story we have a uh, read a lot we know so many of the uh, motivational speakers we 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 know the facts there are so many of the things going on around us and you just have to connect these examples to whatever is given to the expansion of a theme so that statement is to be related with these examples and uh, uh, hmm. one person say it's mindly it's mindly something it's mindly something uh, can you interpret it and uh, no, he is saying that yeah, visualization I, I, means to see mindly yes, and yes, in the yes. eyes closed yes yes yes, yes 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 very nice very true very true that yes all these process is taking place in the mind very true and uh, we must thank him for raising this point that okay here you cannot write anything here i suggest i suggest all the students that whenever you are solving any kind of problem in algebra or maybe any problem in geometry what do you do generally you have the draft right and when you are going for the draft that means you go for the rough work you don't write the answers instantaneously do we do they so they don't write the answers instantaneously they don't write the answers quickly they have the rough work so for languages also we need to have the draft it may never happen that you yes, you read a given proverb and you read the given saying and then you find that okay i start writing the first paragraph and second paragraph third paragraph and conclusion we cannot do all these things we need to go for the rough work and whatever i have uh, given in this uh, whatever uh, slide that you are seeing it is in the mind 
re really very true so you have to think about it right now we haven't even thought about anything we haven't even penned down a single word so when you read something you have to expand all these things that means uh, you have to do all these things and then we are moving forward so what are you uh, expected to do when you are going for the expansion of the thing so this is some kind of pre writing task so what is the pre writing task we are already done with most of the things when we went for the expansion and we need to explore the meaning of the proverb it is already done uh, we need to try to associate extra points so do you know mind mapping uh, that a particular topic is there and you find the related topics related points so that kind of mind mapping or uh, if you don't have any idea of mind mapping just we know that uh, complete the web activity you have something in center and you try to write the associated points somewhere they may be noun they may be verbs they may be adjectives whatever it may be there you can go for the parallel example so these kind of extra points needs to be there there uh, think from different angles and try to get various approaches you need to think uh, from various angles so we cannot uh, when you are writing something you cannot give your own way because this is not a personal response question whenever you are going for the personal response question at that time your own perception is demanded but when you are expanding the theme at that time you have to think uh, from all the sides you have to think from all the ways okay some of the ways may be positive you may like some of the things you may not like some of the things but yes you have to be universal here it's your personal perception is not there you need to think about all the points that can be associated with the given proverb then you should think about the most related examples we have thought about many examples but yes out of those many examples you are selecting you are segregating the examples and those which are most suitable those examples are to be selected after that we need to explore more and more anecdotes suitable to the idea there are so many of the stories we have learned so many stories from our childhood you can also write those stories you can also write some of the experiences i think the new generation is quite uh, uh, exposed uh, to the mass media so when we were young at that time we did not have that kind of, that much exposure now you are going for the podcasts you are going for the uh, channels you are going for some of the uh, facebook and uh, uh, youtube channels and so you you are equipped with a lot of information so you can go for that kind of information think about personal experiences and then if you want to give it a personal touch you can think about your personal experiences so that you can explain it in a more uh, vivid way in a more better way so how many points do we have we have at least 1 2 3 4 5 6 points and there is a lot in all these six points but we are not going for everything so we have to select only the most prominent points for developing our idea so we have so much to write but here we need to be choosy we need to find out what is to be there so here i take a pause and i just would like ma'am to let me know if there are any queries regarding this not yet sir i'm okay, just checking uh, mm -hmm. they have the last chat was formation of mental image yes yes so and that, um, mm -hmm. uh, they are saying can we include anecdote in yes, the yes. expansion yeah here i have already in this slide i think he must have uh, he or she must have given that statement earlier this slide yes we can explore more and more anecdotes but here uh, the uh, red font in the red font and after the uh, slide at the bottom you find that select only the most prominent points so you may have many anecdotes but here you need to be choosy you need to find because what is expansion of theme it does not mean that you are writing in a very 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 big paragraph you are not writing a novel you are choosing something here uh, you need to be concise you need to select you need to express in very short uh, way so you are not explaining the whole story just the gist can be given and that's why uh, the whether they are anecdotes whether they are personal ex experiences whether they are different uh, examples but yes brevity should be there uh, can and we how move? many ex examples they can write 
I think the board demands only hundred uh, or one twenty words, right? Hundred so words. Hundred words. So I think they can go for one or two examples. One or two examples, but if they feel that this is just the minimum, hundred and one twenty, just the minimum, so that they could at least reach to that uh, perfection. Or okay, my ch children should be able to write at least hundred words. But if you go beyond that, there isn't any harm. so if you want to explore more and more and if you think that you are you want to convey more so nobody will uh, reduce your marks but okay make uh, make it sure that you are not writing two or three pages as well <laughs> you can you can go for a one page and one page i think in one page you you can write more than 200 words because uh, when we calculate it on a single in a single line we can write at least eight to nine words <laughs> right yes and yes. there are at least 22 25 or 30 lines that means you have enough you cannot move beyond one page and as i have already said that brevity should be there so this is just the pre writing task we are moving to the next task so this is the rough work whenever you went for the mathematics or uh, science or every, anything you already went for the rough task but right now think about this for the languages as well go for the rough draft whenever you see that okay we were the textbook writers and renu ma'am will also agree that okay whatever we write, we wrote or we selected that was not finalized mm -hmm. we had to go through many drafts and the final product and again this final product is to be verified again and again so this is what we expect from the learners whatever comes to in our mind and your writing haphazardly it is not expected so you need to be choose okay i have selected this word now i have to replace this word because the next word is really very uh, expressive or it has that kind of uh, we can say that uh, the more and more meanings conveyed in itself so you you can go for that uh, so we are moving to the Uh, next task after the pre writing task what is there uh, the organization of the points now you have many many points and you have to organize all these points so how are you organizing these points describe the meaning of the given theme and choose the best appealing selection of words and structure so uh, here uh, you find that it varies from person to person some of the students they uh, write just in an informative manner some of the students they write in a in such a way that some other person the reader the reader feels that okay he is communicating with me so he makes use of the inter, uh, the questions he makes use of the uh, exclamation marks so okay it it varies from person to person so that a personal touch is there so you have to think about it uh, what may be the format so you are writing an introductory paragraph first in an introduction you can explain different logical meanings given uh, related of the given theme uh, think of the well known anecdotes it is uh, in the introduction you can explain at least 3 to 4 such example that means the logical meanings two or three logical meanings i know one or two uh, stories or anecdotes so uh, you can have all these things in a introduction and you can write your own views or opinions or personal experiences in an introduction paragraph okay this is the first paragraph now you are developing the topic afterwards so the first paragraph will be just the beginning and now this is the core part of our expansion of the theme you are developing the topic that means okay this is the topic and you are broadening it you are adding more and more elements to it so how are you adding more and more elements think about the most powerful similar statement there are other statements we know that uh, you you are taught uh, you come across many proverbs sayings and many anecdotes many of such of the statements given by the uh, eminent writers maybe the speakers and motivational speakers so you can put them uh you can sum up or conclude with the effective idiom or proverb and then you can write the concluding paragraph where all these things will be uh, summed up so repetition will not be there but it will be a uh, sum up paragraph so let's find out uh, what is proverb these are some of the common features of the proverb uh, right now we will think about the proverbs only so what is a proverb we need to understand it 
a proverb is passed down through time to time with little change in form we often use it metaphorically and it is in understanding their metaphorical nature that we can unravel their meaning so here we have to find out the meanings from time to time uh the proverbs often make use of grammatical and rhetorical devices that help make them memorable and there is use of alliteration rhyme parallel structure repetition of keywords and phrases and strong imagery so these are some of the features and when you know that uh, this is the format of a proverb so at that time you can think about more and more so here alliteration is there parallel structure is there let's find out the next proverb what is it haste makes waste so you you think that uh, there is some kind of rhyme okay the words and phrases are some kind of uh, uh, assonances they are there you can imagine only three words are there so brevity is there they are metaphorical so you have to think about all these things so okay, when we go forward uh, let's go to the next thing so here proverb Uh, so they they uh, i like to ask the students haste what comes to their mind when they think of haste no. i'll find whether the chat is there no okay so students so what do you mean by haste haste what comes to your idea when you say the haste uh, is the haste hurry varindra kaur is saying hurry hurry okay hurry haste uh, means hurry okay varindra thank you on youtube is saying means waste haste means waste hey, so that is that is a statement but Problem. we are focusing we are uh, what is a uh, okay so tanmay patel we are focusing on the word haste but. okay uh, ma'am uh, you read from the facebook i read from the chat vedan says that speed in doing something especially because you do not have enough time okay enough time uh, lina says urgency urgent right lina and mina they are right okay let's find out is there any other comment from uh, the they are saying unsystematically unsystematically okay unsystematically may be the product of haste and krishna patel is saying speed in doing something yes yeah, speed in doing something as yes, vedant has also expressed the same let's find out what is this these are just the examples these are just the examples because i haven't explored more you can explore more and more so what is this let's go to the slide again these are some of the things that we can go for uh i am not spending so much of the time because we are running late uh, what is haste haste means the lessons are learnt so here i am going clockwise just we are going clockwise what is haste haste means excessive speed you are uh, require you are expected to require something uh, uh, to finish in one day okay i i give you a task can you finish that task in one day but if you try to finish that task in two hours that means you are in a haste right you are given a time permit but yes and how are you going to give, uh, justify the same urgency the answer is already given hurry the answer is given already given now these are some of the meanings but after that you are expected to add your own examples because not a single example is given so here you can give the examples uh, there may be examples uh, related to the examination when you go for the when you prepare yourself for the school are you a uh, uh, time bound or you prepare yourself in a haste children is it a haste or okay you are quite okay with uh, the preparation okay so some such kind of examples can be given uh, you know the stories of shek chilli right the golden egg or gold eggs rather than golden the gold eggs you can write about your own experiences and then you can think about the results of the haste we know that okay whenever some things are done in haste and the answer is already given what was the answer ma'am from you two i think party uh, agency no no answer, answer is answer uh, another another in a uh, done action done in a hurry way 
again again the answer of this result is already given by uh, someone on youtube hurry movement then energetic action speed mm -hmm. in doing something uh unsystematic was it there unsystematic was there okay unsystematic okay when you do the things unsystematic at that time the results are uh, uh, to be seen that you cannot get the good results you will get the poor results and then after this experience you can learn a lesson so okay you have to think about each and every word or proverb now i have dissected the proverb and now i i have thought about only his now moving ahead i will move to the next part of the proverb that is west so what do you mean by west then you can write in the chat box you can give comment on facebook uh, i'm i'm observing the chat box ma'am will observe the youtube comments what is west useless useless okay something which is useless mina says good very good and is there Un anybody unhealthy work unhealthy work okay we are moving forward of so, no use of no use that means wasteless right so unnecessary okay things which is not needed by bhuneshwari uh, okay uh, what is waste waste is unwanted useless consumption the consumption is there but it's useless there isn't any output without expected returns that is the best one you do the things but you do not get the results you do not get the re, uh, returns and uh, waste means total destruction yeah one tanmay <laughs> patil is saying destructive destruction yes yes that means you are on right track our children are uh, very very better okay when you think about this then you can come to the conclusion that okay when you make haste then you get the unproductive results that means you do not get the desired results and final what is there you know that the cipher cipher or cipher the bigger cipher whatever you do it ends in futility so emptiness is there and what is the result of emptiness the last word effect is depression how do you feel when you do a lot of work can you feel that okay you are not getting the results so here in this way what happened that you have thought about the proverb and here we see that the haste and the waste all these two things are there now you have to this is just a rough draft on the left you have haste on the right you have waste and considering all these points you are going to add so many of the things what are you going to add we have already said yes ma'am yeah uh, they had asked one question well, how do they select the words so student this is a way you can select the words yeah it's person to person it differs from person to person okay and you will find that the most words that i have selected are already given answered by the students okay yes. uh, half of the words are answered by the students for example if you look at the screen uh, when we think about haste excessive speed urgency hurry that is already given by the students and then what have i added i have added that okay you can add examples here you can add examples you can write your own experiences you can write the results and you can write the uh, learnt lessons okay when we think about the waste useless consumption without expected returns and destruction and ruin these points were already given by the children now you need to add okay what is the result of this that they are unproductive they are empty and at the the final product is depression so out of this we can come to the conclusion that whenever you want to do something in a very great speed you are going to get nothing and you will it will lead you to the depression so okay this is the central idea right and you have to just uh, move on this central idea in your introductory paragraph that we have already seen so in this way we have to go for this so again we are moving forward here i am not giving you any kind of model deliberately i am not giving you any kind of model and the reason is that 
i don't want you to get any impression from the teachers because uh, expansion of idea deepens from person to person you have to use your own imagination you have to use your own points you need to find out your own world it's free you are like a free bird and you can write anything you can write any example according to whatever you wish so here uh, whatever points we have collected for the introductory paragraph here explain different logical meanings in the given theme we have already thought about all these things right so you have to explain all those then think of well known anecdotes and famous stories write one or two lines about the stories you don't have to write the story of shek chilli uh, is it she i think shek chilli or shek chilli ma'am yes the golden egg the gold egg who kills the uh, no sir Shakespeare is the one who sits ah, on Shakespeare. the tree. Ah, Shakespeare. Okay, okay, okay. And sorry, then he sorry. cuts the tree. Ah, uh, who was same, that then? Same branch. So the farmer was there. The farmer and the golden egg. Ah, uh, the farmer and the golden egg. Okay. So you can just mention it. You are not expected to write the whole story. Okay. Once upon a time there was a farmer and 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 the ten sentences. No, just mention the story. Okay. He did the same. Then again, you have the next story. You you can mention it. The same. Just give the examples. Don't explain it. And in this way, you are able to give three or four examples in the introductory paragraph. Then finally, you can add on your own views or opinions, or you can write your own personal ex experiences. For example, uh, you uh, you can you have many. Whenever you go for the uh, school, when you are uh, preparing something in haste, when you are writing a paper in haste. when you uh, you feel that someone who is in great haste and he just uh, drives carelessly so there are so many of the examples so uh, this is not pre planned when you go for the uh, examination go to the examination hall you read the given proverb or whatever is uh, maxim is given or saying is given to at that time whatever comes to your mind you have to word it you have to associate your personal experiences to that and then finally you need to develop the topic right you uh, think about the most powerful statements so here uh, what is going to be asked i think i have already taken a lot of time uh, ma'am i'm sorry for that no sir you have time you have some time because we are from uh, 6 to 655 right and yes. i need to interact with the yes. children as well yes. <laughs> so before that i need to finish my uh, presentation so here we come now this is what the general idea is you can go to the youtube channel and uh, find the discussion again and again so what is expected in our activity sheet a expansion of proverb you will be given a proverb then maxims quotations or slogans or news report i think we are done with the new report news report yes ma'am yeah no we'll do tomorrow uh, we'll do tomorrow. tomorrow or the day after tomorrow so i'm not thinking about the news report uh, my focus is only on proverb maxim i quotations and slogans right so uh, we have to expand the themes we have to explain only them so what are they what is maxim so you need to understand what is maxim it's a short pithy statement expressing a general truth or a rule of conduct so what is expected so you need to find out okay this is a role of conduct that means it is it is to be done by everyone it is mandatory for all of us then you are you may be given proverbs what are proverbs they are passed down through time with a little change uh, what is a quotation quotation is the repetition of a sentence or a phrase or a passage from a speech or take that someone has already said or written so here when you think about the quotation most probably it may happen that you are aware of the speaker or you are aware of the writer but doesn't matter if you are aware of the speaker or writer it doesn't matter what is in the name do you have any idea who wrote this what's in thy name children can you write shakespeare okay it's given by the by shakespeare but okay you don't know so doesn't matter but yes you can expand the theme yet you can expand the theme so you can say that okay them doesn't matter so what matters the most then you think about many things so if name is not important then what is important finally you may come to the conclusion that okay name doesn't matter that means here uh, the work done by a person matters the most right 
so here this may be the conclusion there are many many gaps but yes i have directly given you the conclusions then uh you are given the slogan that is a short striking or memorable phrase used in advertising which has attributes of being memorable very concise so concise is a very important word for all of us and appealing to the audience so our uh, expansion should be concise as well as appealing so you will be asked only maxims proverbs quotation and slogan so you need to understand what is maxim whatever is given to you is a maxim proverb quotation or a slogan and then you can start exploring it again and again so here uh in the last activity sheet these were some of the these were the two uh, statements given for expansion of the theme the first one is every dark cloud has a silver lining and the second is procrastination or is the thief of time so i have already given you the meaning of procrastination what is it i think the word uh, are you aware of the word or not students are you aware of this word procrastination procrastination do you do you do you have any idea what is the meaning of procrastination i have already given you the meaning but okay have you yes yes lina says that yes, she knows it that means it's somewhere from the text okay so you know you can uh, what is the procrastination the action of delaying or postponing something so when you delay something that is a thief of the time what is the action of a thief the thief steals the things so when you delay something at that time your time is taken by someone else so you don't have enough time when you delay so many of the things okay so in this way we are about to have it we will have the discussion about every cloud has a silver lining and procrastination is the thief of the time uh when i i end my presentation we can use the chat box then and here uh, i will just i will just like to focus on the marking scheme or for expansion of proverb maxim quotation and slogans whatever we have done we already know that yes there will be title and beginning so you you cannot write the same you can uh, modify the title it carries one mark so i think that uh, by explaining the theme uh, what is the meaning of the theme we have already thought about it that means you are uh, liable to get one mark the vocabulary and grammar one mark if you add appropriate points one mark whether you arrange them in a logical order we have already thought about the logical order what is logical order logical order means the first point is explained and after that the second point is quite related to the first point so you should not uh, think about all those points that okay the first point is explained then you add the next point and then you repeat the uh, first point again so in this way you are not going for so there should be an ease there should be a flow and the final conclusion should be there so when you think about the marking sim you find that uh, you are able to get more and more marks but what needs to be done is just give the treatment so uh, i don't find that there is any uh, problem in marking scheme so yeah, out of 5 you can get at least more than 4 yeah. okay so in this way uh, forget about the uh, marks uh this is what my advice is just uh, follow your rational follow your feelings and you just want to explain yourself you just want to explore yourself and in this way you are going for the expansion of idea it's just the expression don't treat expansion of proverb as a writing skill matter okay this is no this is only the point where you can express yourself because the children children want to express themselves this is the only question where you can write whatever you wish so here uh, i think uh, i should uh, stop my presentation and then we can go for the discussion so uh, chat box is open right now okay so uh, so they want example of quotation quotation a quotation is a repetition of sentence or phrase from a passage or speech uh, for example we know uh, maybe uh, gandhi ji's message that can be taken leave, uh, leave yeah. and let live and in okay. the, in yeah 
in their textbook also there is one uh, yes. by napoleon impossible itself says that i am possible it's in the ninth standard textbook okay. yes yes and i would i would like to give you an advice that okay don't think about don't think about the other literature and whatever it is there you can focus on your textbooks whatever you have learnt in standard 9 whatever you have learnt in standard 10 you can just follow the same things okay you can give the examples from your course book no doesn't matter because you cannot go outside whatever is there this is your uh, background this is your knowledge and yes uh you are using whatever you have learnt in your expansion of the theme you can give the examples of your lessons as well there are so many uh, beautiful lessons that uh, that are in your course books uh, whether uh, and it's not mandatory that you give the examples of uh, english textbooks as well you can uh, have the combination of some lessons from the science some lessons from the other language the second language right so just try to give and can you give yourself. imaginary example for uh, for example like in the uh, body body of the okay imaginary but uh, ma'am i think i personally think that uh, the imaginary examples will not appeal the audience okay so this uh, is a question from raj more yes ma'am that uh, imaginary examples okay 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 yes yes because this is expansion of idea you can have the imagination you can put your idea but okay uh, it should appeal the other person who is reading it and when you are uh, dealing with someone at that time it should appeal to that person so imagination for imagination you have so many of the other uh, you have letter writing as well okay you have speech you have dialogue writing so you can add your imagination even uh, Uh, the news writing there also you have scope of imagination because in uh, expansion of idea what happens that you have to go uh, with a selection you have to use selective words selective language and when we want to explain our own imaginations we need to explain it more and more mm. okay so and here the brevity will not be there so you can use it if you 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 have that ability use it in news writing use it in story writing use it in dialogue writing okay there is still a scope of expression yes ma'am so and so one question has that has come from arjun choudhary mm -hmm. is in can we use hindi shlokas or sanskrit uh, shloka in a expansion uh, but you have to translate them in english okay whether you use them but i think that you need to translate them because we also find that okay uh, we have also english in uh, so okay we uh, the language is just the way of expression whether it is uh, hindi or whether it is english but yes if you are giving the reference okay when you are giving the reference why don't you say that okay in hindi the similar idea is expressed uh, which states and you can write it there is no need to give the shloka as well you can just give the meaning so it will what will happen that it will reduce your word limit yes ma'am and then uh, someone saying um is expansion better or new juice board better what choice they should make uh i think uh, you will find out your own choice what do you find better to express yourself because this is not for the writing only if you feel that okay i am comfortable with adding more and more i am comfortable with uh, because what happens that uh, here uh, for example uh, when you are going for the news writing you have a limited structure okay you need to follow the uh, same pattern but when you think about expansion of idea okay you can you have endless capacities you you have you don't have any boundary but when you go for the news writing at that time you need to go for the intro you need to go for the uh, main body then the uh, other subordinate details and so there is a format but here you don't have any format you are not uh, uh, compelled to use any kind of language you are not compelled to you can go beyond so it is just like uh, finding new horizons expressing yourselves okay that uh, showing your own uh, knowledge and uh, giving your uh, perceptions uh, sharing your experiences with others so i think uh, 
uh, as a student if you want to uh, if you are a learner of a language english is not a subject english is a language okay and if you want to explore more and more of a language so i will personally prefer uh, expansion of idea but if you think that okay i would like to just work in the frame so for that framework news writing is there and i think I, uh, everything is for the betterment of the students so everything is for you only it's your choice so the uh, sachin dahi is asking one question hmm. can we start the starting line by it means that so he can start by with uh, it means that the proverb means that okay but uh, instead of writing yeah. it means that you can just explain it uh, simply why are you using three extra words yes yes you True. can start uh, directly directly you can explain it directly okay and these many other question that i have got from youtube and face uh, the, this zoom i don't see i don't find questions. any questions on yeah. zoom so students you don't have any questions no sir they don't have any questions so have you understood it or not <laughs> students so this, have you all understood so this is something that you need to explore more and more and for that you have to read a lot uh, just try to share whatever i mean the students are very good at sharing the things uh, the real fact is that they don't share the same things with the teachers but they share a lot in their friends <laughs> so in the same way, in the same way, you are sharing it. Expansion of idea is just sharing, associating the statement with the experiences, with the heard stories, with the anecdotes, and everything, and then coming to a conclusion. That means you are Tanmay, preparing your Tanmay future. Tanmay is having a a question. Yes, ma'am. And again, again, he is posing a question. Saying, "My question is, up, up. can we include humorous stories?" Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we can include the humorous stories, but I, as I have already said, that you can mention them. Just mention them. Uh, in when you try to include a story, that means that the story will take at least one uh, fifty words. If you explain any story, it will take more and more words because this is not the story writing uh, task. Yeah, true. this is just the expansion of idea task. That you can give the reference. Okay, you can uh, put that. Okay, there is a humorous story of dash dash dash, in which dash 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 the message, right? You can have it, but writing the story in expansion of idea, I don't think that because you can. Uh, what 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 is the purpose of expansion of idea? Is that you are uh, just supporting the given statement, and you can support the statement by giving maximum examples, not just one example. if you give the one example and uh, we you say that okay now the point is clarified and i am done with it so other person will not feel that okay uh, the uh, discussion is over so if you start giving more and more examples only then i think that the purpose will be justified yes uh, meena says that there are no doubts yeah they... and uh, shubham says that what is the time limit usually uh, the time limit that you have to check uh, i think uh, for one mark we can give two two minutes so they not they more have than 10 minutes 15 minutes for writing each yes, writing not uh, not more than 10 minutes what uh, i say because uh, if you get revise. extra time if you get extra time you can come back to it you have to plan each and every question in the same way uh, shubham says that how many paragraphs okay there may be at least three paragraphs the first paragraph may consist of introduction the second paragraph will have the elaboration or explanation or uh, expansion and the last may be the conclusion so at least three paragraphs should be there if there are more than that but okay it should not be like an essay okay some examples they wanted of uh... expansion of theme yes i have deliberately not given the examples what happens that okay it's a matter of creativity 
if i want to if i give my examples i i, I have some of the examples ready okay but what will happen that you will be under the impression that okay this is this is what is expected but here uh, your imagination is to be tested your language is to be tested the way you feel the way you expect express or the view the way you interact everything is demanded so don't follow your teachers follow your conscience <laughs> well, this is your world uh, this is your own world this is your universe and you have to okay what remit is 100 and 120 mina yes ma'am yeah i i so there are no comments Thank but you. yes sir, it was such an elaborate session and yes, you have you have taken all the points right from the title to the conclusion it is um, it is it was a wonderful session in fact i was also thinking the, the coherence that you have put in uh, and in the essay in the expansion of theme and um, you have not given a concrete uh, format so the child will create his own page so that that is very good that is very good let the child innovate sure uh, and um, with this i i really thank you sir thank you. i call upon aditi to give propose the vote of thanks thank you for inviting me ma'am and Sorry. having the interaction with the students and i find i find that okay there is some kind of similarity with uh, between us because the way i think the students also think, uh, the students also think in the same way i uh, we always think we teachers we are teachers sir yes. so we always think from the point of the students so it really works out sure ma'am and sir thank you for you being here because you are such a experienced person with uh, so much uh, knowledge and um, encounters with so many teachers so you are a better hand to explain the expansion thank and you and thank you so much but uh, aditi will be give proposing the vote of thanks yeah good evening everyone on the behalf of the members of mnet i would like to thank mr avinash for volunteering his time and providing us with such an enlightening presentation on the topic of expand the theme the topic explained by him is definitely going to be of immense help to the teachers as well as to the students many thanks to the host and convener mrs renu dotre for organizing this extremely insightful learn from home webinar series for students of higher level english high schools to the platform of mnet I would also like to appreciate the constant efforts of Mr. Nadeem Khan for providing the necessary technical support to M. These workshops have enabled the teachers to stay updated with latest methods and tools in varied areas of teaching, which can be utilized by them in the classroom as well as for online teaching purposes. The Learn from Home webinar series for students has enabled the students to learn English language through the online interactive platform. I would also like to extend our thanks to the participants from various countries for effectively participating in the various Mnet workshops held till date. We at Mnet appreciate the positive feedback obtained from all the participants and look forward to such enthusiasm from them in the future as well. Once again, a huge thanks to everyone. Have a great evening. And as we say, knowledge shared is knowledge squared. So request everyone to share these knowledgeable videos to all the students and teachers. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Aditi. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank We you, hope you come back again because you are yes, doing a lot of work in Evelta and Eli. Uh, it's commendable. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.